Right. Is the tumble dryer too loud? I don't know. I mean, I hear it, but this camera pick it up. You're going to have to excuse it if you hear it. Sorry. Hi, hey, hello, welcome, well, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is a recent reads one, and I'm doing the witchy feels vibes. I don't know, because um, for some reason I picked up a couple of books that have all the witchy feeling vibiness. I words. Anyway, so I have. Let's see if I can do this without knocking down my teeth, which is right over there. But I have three books here. Yay! Um, two kind of chunky ones and um, one decent sized one. So. Um, I've accident. I took this to Yalk uh, to get it signed. Hang on. Eep. Very pretty. Um, but um, on the way, I accidentally like, I I I I, I did. I, I hurt it. I hurt the book. The book is hurt. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> poor book. Uh, it's the only book that got slightly damaged on the way. So I mean. There's a win for that, thinking about how many books I, like, threw in a bag, more, more or less. Um, but yeah, um, slightly damaged. Anyway, shall we talk about the first book? Let's do it. So, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by, I'm going to butcher this, Sangu Bandana. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the blurb from the back because uh, I'm too lazy to think. Yes. As one of the few witches in Britain, Mika Moon, great name by the way, knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. And as an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules, with one exception, an online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will take it seriously. But someone does. An unexpected message arrives, begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches how to control their magic. It breaks all of the rules, but Mika goes anyway and is immediately tangled up in the lives and secrets of not only the three charges, but also an absent archaeologist, a retired actor, two long-suffering caretakers, and Jamie. The handsome and prickly librarian of Nowhere House would do anything to protect the children and as far as he's concerned, a stranger like Mika is a threat. An irritatingly appealing threat. Um, there's some more bits but let's not read everything because there's a, there's a lot of text on the back. Anyway, so this book is so freaking adorable in every way shape or form there is so um so Mika goes to this nowhere house which uh, <laughs> which is owned by a witch so the aban ab abandoned absent <laughs> the absent archaeologist is the one that owns nowhere house so uh but she's like She's away, so she's not there, uh, and she rarely ever goes to the house. She's, like, there once a year to, like, continue on the raising the wards or renew the wards. That's the word. That's the word I was reading. <laughs> wow. Words. Um, so she basically just comes back for that, but uh, the house is, like, taken care of, like, a maid, cook, housekeeper... I don't know, um, uh, a librarian, Jamie, uh, a gardener, and the old actors who, I'm not quite sure what his role for, like, the house is, but he's married to the gardener, so, um, I, I, I guess that's the connection, um, and 
yeah, uh, along the way, so the the um, the archaeologist she found uh, these three children who just happens to be witches, um, like here and there on her travels. It reminds me so much of ballet shoes, um, except for that they're witches. <laughs> But it's it reminds me so much of ballet shoes, and I think there's like a There's a small like little Yeah, um, I think you know what I mean. I barely know what I mean most of the time, but I think you understand me anyway Yeah, yeah <laughs> No, but honestly such a cute I don't want to say love story because that's not like the main thing of it. There is a like love plot in it, I suppose, but the the main thing isn't like the the one-on-one -on -one love. It's the whole family thing. Um so, so oh, it's such a cute book. It's a book. It's such a cute book, such a cute story. I bloody loved it and I think you should read it if you haven't already, and if you have already, read it again. I definitely, um, this is definitely a book I can see myself rereading, um, at some point. <laughs> at some point, okay. But yes, maybe next year. Why am I whispering? I don't know. Okay, let's move on to the next book. Yeah. So, next book. Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors. Tors. I'm not too sure, but that's that's how it's spelled. Um, let's let's do the thingy. Joanna. Let's skip the last names because yeah, Joanna lives alone in the woods of Vermont, the sole protector of a collection of rare books, books that will allow someone to walk through walls, or turn water into wine, books of magic. Her estranged older sister Esther moves between countries and jobs, constantly changing, never staying anywhere longer than a year, desperate to avoid the deadly magic that killed her mother. Currently working on a research base in Antarctica, she has found love and perhaps a sort of happiness. But when she finds spots of blood on the mirrors in the research base, she knows someone is coming for her and that Joanna and her collection are in danger. If they are to survive, Esther and Joanna must unravel the secrets their parents kept hidden from them, secrets that span centuries and continents and could cost them their lives. Going into this book, I had no freaking idea what it was, what what to expect. Also, appreciate the spray edges because hot. Uh, <laughs> distraction. So we jump a lot through different points of view. So we have Joanna and we have Esther, the two half sisters technically, uh, but they're sisters. Uh, and then we have. What was his name? His, um, the, 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 uh, it's the rich English dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, who's, who's kind of been kept, uh, behind wards and stuff, because he's one of the people that can write magic. He can't actually use it himself, but he can create it for someone else to use. So, you pick up a book and you, you read uh, whatever and then the magic comes um, It's a whole process. There's a lot of blood involved and uh, whatnot uh, Yeah, uh, hence the the ink blood But it was it was a very interesting concept. Honestly, I kind of wanted more in the end of it because um, So Joanna has this huge collection of books books of magic uh, well, yeah uh, and they, it, the books are kind of creepy in a way because they're made of skin and written in blood and all that. So it's like, ugh, disgusting. Um, kind of grossed me out. <laughs> but then uh, the uh, rich English dude, he lives in, I guess an institution is a, a good word for it. Uh, and there's a huge library uh, in this place. Uh, way, way, way bigger than Joanna's uh, collection. Her collection is 
tiny compared and just the thought of there being a, that huge of a library think like the British Library or something like that huge place thousands of books maybe millions I don't know um of just <laughs> books made of skin and blood creeps me out um, there's intrigue in this, there's, there's a mystery that's going on and we have to like figure out who we can actually trust, um, well, the characters can trust, but we as a reader, you know, um, such a cool concept, um, I'm definitely, definitely interested in seeing what Emma writes other than this book, because I think this is her debut book, um, if it's not, I, I don't know, but I, I think this is her one and only book so far, so I'm curious to see what else she will write, um, because freaking amazing, definitely recommend if you want some, uh, well, magic is the big thing, but also family and, um, stuff, <laughs> witchy feely vibey thing this is where we're going with so the last book i read is one for my enemy by oliver blake so at first i wondered about the because i heard there was like witches and stuff so appreciate spread edges first of all uh and let's read the blubby blubs so in new york city two rival witch families fight for the upper hand See, this is where the witchy thingy comes in. Anyway, the Antonova sisters are beautiful, cunning and ruthless, and their mother, known only as Baba Yaga, is an elusive supplier of premium intoxicants. Their adversaries, the influential Fedorov brothers, serve their crime boss father, named Kostche. I, 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 I'm sorry about the words. I mean names. Kostje the Deathless, his enterprise dominates the shadows of magical Manhattan. For 12 years, the families have man maintained a fraught stalemate. Then everything is thrown into disarray. Bad blood carries them to the brink of disaster, even as fate draws together a brother and sister from either side. Yet the siblings still struggle for power, and internal conflicts could destroy each family from within. Very Romeo and Juliet inspired put in witchiness and more like modern day Manhattan and the districts and stuff. I thoroughly, so it's kind of written like a play. So we have, um, it, it's like in acts of stuff. So it's like acts and scenes and it's written out and formatted that way, which, um, is something I could have very easily been super annoyed about, but for some reason it just worked. It just worked in this book and I thoroughly enjoyed it actually. I really, really, really liked the concept of it. It's fun to see like the different characters like evolving and interacting with each other. So we have the sisters and we have the brothers and we can clearly see which one of them is a bad egg. How they were, I guess, falling for each other. I, I suppose I can say as much. Uh, so the youngest, the youngest sister and the youngest brother, uh, they end up falling for each other in in the beginning. So um, the sister, the, the youngest sister is... <sighs> Well, she's out and about, and the youngest brother, he's like, I don't remember their names, by the way. Um, so that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, anyway, they um, sort of unintentionally meet, and then he figure, figures out who she is just after having asked her out. And it takes a while for him to confess who he is uh so she doesn't know in the beginning but he's like slowly falling for her and she's definitely falling for him uh so you know there's that and then he tells her and then it's like shit well do you just want to hook up anyway <laughs> 
So, you know, there's that. And then we find out very early, early on as well that the older sister and the oldest brother, they had sort of a fling going on. They were in a relationship when they were, I, I want to say like 18, thereabouts. Um, older, young adult, very young, new adult, I, t I don't know. They're about 18 about they they had a relationship because their fathers um were sort of in business together so they knew knew each other um like from early on i guess and so they developed this relationship along the way and uh well, the feelings didn't really go away, even though she uh, went and married someone else. Um, but, you know. So, beginning, I want to say like three quarters of the book is well done. At least like half the book to three quarters of the book, well done. The, the plot makes sense. But then we come to the ending. And I'm sorry if this is like a spoiler. I want to try not to spoil it. However, I want to say that the ending is rushed. The ending feels so rushed. Um, and it's like she only had so many words to write the book with. And she was running out of words or something. Or she just wanted to finish the book up. I don't know the the whole process behind the writing of the book but the ending feels rushed and like oh well, i don't want to kill off this character so let's not do that and let's yeah it's like i want to make it a happily ever after except you can't actually do that in a romeo and juliet kind of inspired thing so you gotta have some death in there um, but yeah, not too pleased about the ending. Could have been done better, I'm not gonna lie. But I did thoroughly enjoy the book and the whole concept of it. Um, just not the ending so much. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's, that's all I can say. So before my camera turns itself off, because I've been babbling for a long time now, hope the video isn't this long. Anyway, if you've read any of these books, let me know. Let's have a chat. Uh, does my talking about them want you to, makes you want to pick up the books? Probably not. I'm not that inspired. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that inspiring. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.